What you are looking at right now, with the exception of, of course, two of my camcorders, is my most recent thrift store purchase. This, of course, is the Panasonic RC80 clock radio. The alarm is armed, so it should go off in a second. Armed is probably not the right word for it. But... Oops, there's what the alarm sounds like. Anyways, this thing is, of course, like I said, other than the, uh, I believe there were two camcorders, a JVC GRC7 and a Panasonic camcorder. This is my most recent thrift store purchase. And in fact, even the camcorder, it's been over a month since I got that. So, what's been going on? Why hasn't there been anything at the thrift store? Or more specifically, why haven't I bought anything at the thrift store? Well, the simple answer is that of selectivity and prices. Prices being one of the big things. You see, I used to get these co-op radios at a store that was great for these. Sure, it might have been a little bit on the expensive side at anywhere between four and four to seven dollars per unit. But that pales in comparison to the ten plus that they are now charging for an equivalent co-op radio to this. I looked there, I found a uh, Panasonic, not a Panasonic, a uh, GE 7-4625, similar to the one that I already have, I've made a video about it, for $10. They wanted $10 for that. I got my unit for $5, half of that, and it was in better condition. It's just insane. And if you think that's insane, get a load of this. They had a tripod there that, uh, functional, but it was entirely made out of plastic, and it was kind of cheap and flimsy. I was still tempted until I saw the price tag. They wanted $24.99, $25 for this plastic tripod. The tripod I'm using right now, which is a Black's BX60, is made entirely out of metal, almost. The, uh... Like the handle is plastic and the, the knobs are plastic and all of that. But the rest of it is metal. It has it where it counts, all metal. And I got this for two dollars, no, three dollars, at a Salvation Army. It's a little bit busticated. There's a piece on the bottom that's, uh, well, it's missing some screws so the feet don't uh, quite go out properly, but it still works. I'm using it right now to shoot this video. Three dollars compared to twenty-five dollars. They had a top-loading VCR there, a Panasonic Omnivision of some kind. Not a bad little unit, but not VHS Hi-Fi, and certainly not worth the $14.99 on the price sticker. They had a Yamaha Dual-Well cassette deck there, $35. Of course, there are some hidden gems, this video is about one of them, that I also found today. Check this out. Fortunately, you cannot really see it when you turn the lights on. But this is a compact. This is a compact Presario 500, 5000. Unfortunately, it is only a Celeron, you can see down there. But, it is a PGA 370 Celeron. Go ahead and have a more closer look here. You can see a floppy diskette drive. That is a brand new floppy drive. I don't think it's in focus, but brand new floppy drive. Here's the original optical drive, and it's also got an LG DVD burner in the top. I gave ten dollars for this unit. What I've just showed you, with the exception of maybe the Celeron badge, is worth a fair bit more than ten dollars. All right, let's go ahead and crack the cover. Have a look inside. If I can crack the cover, I'll show you how this works. You can also see on the back here. There's a Windows 98 COA. This must be a really early Presario 5000 because these things were made around the turn of the century. You know, 1999, 2000, somewhere in there, 2001. 
And this one is certified for Windows 98. I would have thought that something like this would be certified for Windows Millennium Edition at the very least. Maybe Windows 2000. Not Windows 98, but this one's certified for Windows 98. We can take a look at some of the ports that it's got. It almost looks like an HP motherboard, but it's not an HP, because I don't believe so. I thought the HP merger happened a lot later than this thing would have been made. PS2, two USB, guaranteed to be 1.1 ports. Serial, parallel, VGA, audio output, and a joystick port. Somebody also added, you could just barely make it out. If I get a light, you should be able to make it out a little bit better. There is a Ethernet card that somebody has added on after the fact. Alright. I don't think the power supply is a Best Tech OEM unit, but it could be. All I know is it does have compact name on it. Let's try and open up this case. I don't know if this case is broken. I have tried to open this already several times, and it's... I can get it open! It just takes a lot more effort than I think should be necessary. Which you can see demonstrated here. What you do is you're supposed to push down this latch, and I guess the whole thing is supposed to come off. But it doesn't. It's missing the screw at the back here, and I also notice it's missing the screw here which is for the power supply. I don't know if they thought they could get this other side panel off. They can't. It's riveted in place. Well, it worked enough. Pull the side panel off. Where you can see the price sticker. 2,527. So that's what the case is made, at least. If we take a look inside, you can see some of the magic within. Somebody maxed out the RAM. This is just PC-133. Actually, it's PC-100. There's a CPU. And if we take a closer look, you might not be able to see it, but that says PGA-370. So that is a Pentium 3 era Celeron that is installed in here. It must have been upgraded to a Pentium 3, which it could be. The RAM has certainly been upgraded. Those are not matched memory modules. The heathens, those people are. I've upgraded this thing. It's got an Intel chipset. That's located right beside that. And I don't know if you'll, yeah, you won't really be able to see it's hidden by the neck, but it's got ESS audio. What is that? That's another Intel chip down there. There's a CMOS battery. I'll be very surprised if that's still good. There's a cabling mess, and then there's the hard drive back in there. I believe it's a 10 gigabyte hard drive, but I haven't verified it. I have not put this thing up to a monitor. I have powered it on to verify that at least the power supply is good. It turns on, but it doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. And the hard drive light stays on, which is a little bit concerning to me. I don't know if the hard drive is any good, or even if the whole computer is any good. But uh, we are going to fire it up on this video. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get my KVM cable here. I'm going to do this live, I'm not going to do any editing, so people can't say, Oh, that's not the first power up! No, it is. No, first power up while it's hooked up. So I'll plug in the monitor. Helps if you plug it in the right way. I'm not even going to do it with the screws, because I don't really think it's necessary. Although I'll have somebody bitch about it in the comments. Oops, swear word. Oh well, I've already said it. It's not that bad of a swear word, so... I dropped an F-bomb or anything like that, which I have done in videos, much to the, the chagrin of my audience, I'm sure. Do my KVM switch since I'm sort of ready for it. And we will... I have no idea what it is about some of these things. You know, when I start working on a computer that I've never worked on before, I start getting a sniffles. And I don't understand that. It really doesn't make any sense to me. So, we'll... No. Unplug the clock radio, because we don't need that for a demonstration. And we will go ahead and plug it in. Just like that. Plugged in. And we will... push power and see what happens. It comes on. Makes a lot of noise. I don't see anything on the screen. Yeah, there's nothing on the screen. 
So this is probably going to take some troubleshooting. Ah, we do not even get a power on self test out of the unit. I don't know, is my keyboard initialized? I don't even have a keyboard. That is not a good sign, folks. This one could be dead. Well, let me start simplifying the configuration. All right, check it out, folks. It's working. And I don't even know what exactly the problem was. <laughs> um, I've simplified it significantly. All right, we got a 164 error. That's definitely reminiscent of IBM. It looks like an IBM code. Yeah, no fixed disk present. Total memory installed 128 megabytes. OS not found. Of course not. Doesn't have a hard drive. So in the process of simplifying the configuration, I noticed that the VGA port was a little messed up. I couldn't plug my uh, VGA cable all the way in. Um, so I figured that out. It was because one of the little nuts. You know how there's nuts that hold it in place. Let me show that to you so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Alright, so I don't know if it's recording or if it recorded that last little segment, but uh, we've now got all the memory modules. It wasn't detecting it a second ago, and the system royally got upset with me. Okay, so the configuration's been automatically updated. What happens next? No operating system found. So, anyway. That's a good sign so far. Now I need to install the hard drive. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to install the hard drive and then I'm going to install the optical drives. Because it's possible that these optical drives are jumpered incorrectly. And that might be what's holding the system down. Because I know that holds some systems down. So, we'll go start with the hard drive and see what's on the hard drive. Alright, take... what is this? Take 4? I think it's take 4. But the hard drive, and I also plugged in the floppy drive. Still posts. Counting up our memory megabyte by megabyte. Very slow process of counting up memory. I could probably skip it with the keyboard, which is sitting over there, but I don't really want to. We'll just let it run through its memory count. Should be 255 megabytes, 256, but the extra megabyte disappears, presumably because it's being used for the onboard video. Okay, that's a 40 gigabyte hard drive, so that's not original to the system. And then it rebooted itself. Okay. I would have thought that it would have gone into setup, but I guess it's not going to go into setup. Maybe it'll try and boot, maybe it won't, I don't know. Trying to boot from floppy, here comes the hard drive, and I think this has Windows XP on it. Yep, Windows XP, as the camera tries to focus on nothing, it fails miserably. This probably has a password on it. I could erase it, I don't really care though. It's probably malware all over this thing. If it even boots. The hard drive is doing nuts. Sometimes I really do hate tripods. I don't even know if you can see it. The LEDs on this thing are so dim that it's not even funny. So obviously this is a high hour unit. Do we have a password set on the system? Windows is starting up. Uh now well we've got another French computer. Salle de Madame Julie. Okay. I don't have a mouse, so I guess I'm going to be doing this without a mouse. Hopefully you can't see my head and nothing else. Do you have a password? I you got a password. I wonder if they left the administrator password for me. Nope. Alright, so I'm not getting into that Windows XP installation. Well, I can. I may still try. I have a password eraser utility I may try and use on this thing. But, in the meantime, yeah, I think I'll... You know what? I'm going to try and get into this. Let's try and break into the system and see what happens. <laughs> okay, well, I got into the system. And there is stuff on here. 
But uh, anyways, there were three accounts. There was Admin, Madame Julie, and Sal. And I got into the Sal account. I love this. This is absolutely hilarious. Let me get this wire up here so I can actually show this a little bit better. Let's take a look at some of these icons. So obviously they got right on down to emptying the recycle bin. Got a PowerPoint presentation, Christmas story, a new Christmas story. That's cut off. I don't know if that's supposed to be a change maison or, or what. I know that that means uh, exchange house. Yeah, it probably is exactly what it is. An change de maison. Change of house. Don't know what that is. Antidote. Probably an antivirus program that doesn't do anything. We got internet. We got a shortcut to internet. Come on, folks. Shortcut to internet. Exactly the same. I see they have good taste in games. There's pinball. MS Paint, Notepad, Word, PowerPoint, and Idiot Exploiter. And there's that stupid wire again. So. Not a whole heck of a lot. I imagine this is a guest account. I don't have a mouse, but I don't really need a mouse to navigate Windows. So let's try this. Let's try and actually do some navigation. This is rather difficult because this keyboard is not designed for this. Yeah, this is probably a guest account of some kind. AVG 3.8. That's AVG 3.8. That's old. Spybot search and destroy. So, yeah, it's probably not catching anything, because this thing's probably full of malware. It might even be what this antidote thing is, just a bunch of spyware. Let me see here. I'm getting to explore. I wasn't going to ask you to do it. Oh, running's disabled. Somebody knew what they were doing. I'll tell you that much. I might still be able to get into it, though. If I had a mouse, this would be a lot easier. Does that even work? Sure it does. Alright. Ha. Let's see what happens. Let's my computer. In go. C drive. Documents and settings. Access is denied. Oh, of course it is. That's of course also denied. So let's go in here. If there's anything in oh there's a crap load of stuff in there. I'm gonna go to that. User data, start menu, desktop. Alright, so there's a ton of crap left behind here. So this is another another one of those examples of this is why we do not donate computers to thrift stores if we don't erase them. Or at the very least, you know, take out the hard drive. Because if you take out the hard drive, nobody can get access to your data. Nobody ever listened to the thing that I ever had to say, though, so I guess there's one thing. But all that data left behind. I wonder what else is left behind. There could be saved passwords, all kinds of things on this. People really just do not take care of their stuff the way that they should. Well, this is interesting. Check this out. I'm in the system BIOS right now, just checking things around, perusing. Processor type is Pentium 3. I don't know if it distinguishes between Pentium 3s and Celerons, or if it's just dumb and figures, oh, it's a Pentium 3 based core, so it must be a Pentium 3. That's odd. Maybe this is a full fledged Pentium system. It also says it's an 800 megahertz CPU, which is odd because the specification sheet, or the specifications online at least, said that it was a 566 at 66 megahertz front side bus. It's running at 133. So this is interesting. System ROM date is 6-20-2000. Um, so let me go ahead and go back over here. Take a look at some of the other things. Probably get a nice view of my head right about now. Let's see what it thinks of the date and time or add. Thinks it's gone back to the year 2000. At least it's Y2K compliant. Although I've never seen a computer that wasn't. Does this in military time. So what? What is that? 2035? Something like that. Go. 
good to me. All that looks good to me. Change the boot order. That looks good. So it should theoretically be the floppy first. There we go. Security, I'm going to ignore all that. Our loss management. Turn to last state. Sounds good to me. Power on self test. We can full boot it. I don't really care that much. Everything there looks fine. Onboard devices, bus options, PCI bus master is on. And we got all that junk. ECP. That looks fine to me. Everything seems fine. Processor serial number. That was a thing uh, with the Pentium 3, I believe. Yeah, it was just the Pentium 3 that had that. But the processor serial number was a way for websites and such to uniquely identify your computer based on what CPU your system was running. I'm sorry that was zoomed all the way out. You probably saw a whole, whole, whole lot of nothing while that was going on. But, uh... Intel removed that in later CPUs because it was seen as too much of a privacy issue. Um, because, of course, you can uniquely identify a computer based on the serial number of the CPU. And then again, what happens if you change the CPU? The serial number changes, so that screws that whole thing up. So that was worthless. That was a feature that was only available in the Pentium 3 and basically nothing else. Alright, I think I found the appropriate disk. I've also got a, a keyboard plugged into the system now. This is a piece of crap keyboard that I got for way too much money at the thrift store uh, a long time ago. But uh, it will certainly do for this test. It certainly seems to work. So let's see if it actually will boot off of this CD. I think this is the, the boot disk. Could not be. It said the disk wasn't empty though, so it very likely is. Sure does take this thing a long time to post. All right. Well, it's not booting in anything, so I guess that is not. Oh, it's not booting to the discs. That's not the boot disk. Let me do some more digging. Okay, it's not in focus, piece of junk, but I found the disk I want. This thing really has electric arthritis. Are you going to focus at any point now between the now and the next millennium? Seriously, let's go. Piece of junk. Alright, you should be into, here we go, NT password. Just boot. And it doesn't like my keyboard. Of course it doesn't like my keyboard. So now i got to go use the other keyboard. <sighs> what a pain, what a pain. What a big, big pain. Okay, control alt delete to reboot it. Let's do that. Eject that disk because we don't need it anymore. System will boot, probably all out of focus. No, that's not. I'm impressed. So now we should boot into Windows if that didn't trash the Windows installation. Sometimes it will actually trash the Windows install. I've noticed that. It's kind of a real shame when it does that, but I don't really ever lose any sleep over it, because if it's one of my systems, I have backups, and if it wasn't one of my systems, well, it's not something I should have been messing around with anyway, so. But, uh, this is gonna be probably getting hit with the good old-fashioned boot and nuke anyway, so. I'm only doing this for pure curiosity, and just to show you how easy it really is to break into somebody's account. You know, if you, all you really need is the right tool. Where's the camera? There it is. Great tools are not hard to get for free. 
in before somebody says, oh, Linux is free too. Well, you can play your cards right, Windows is as well. And I don't mean by getting torrents because that is illegal. All right. Let's try the admin password. Now blank, so you can get into the administrator account, no problem. Background is black. If it even works. It looks like it does. It should install my keyboard driver. You know, I don't really need it, strictly. This thing is really slow. Not an XP machine by any stretch of the imagination. You have a new text document on the desktop. That's an odd thing to have, but it's there nonetheless. I'm not hooking this thing up to my network, so if it needs to go online to get a driver for a keyboard, even though I don't know why that would be, it's a standard keyboard for crying out loud, then, well, guess what we will not be doing. Alright, keyboard works. At least the number lock button did. Alright, number lock works, but the rest of the keyboard doesn't. Oh, there we go. Now we got caps lock. I still don't have anything else from this keyboard. Maybe the keyboard's broken, I don't know. I don't have a second Windows key, that's stupid. I'll just do that. No, I guess the Windows key's broken. Control Escape works. Now the Windows key works. Alright, so just was well, installing a driver. My computer. And I wanted to check something about this. I wanted to see what Windows thinks the CPU is. If it's a Celeron or if it's a Pentium 3. It should be a Celeron. Properties. We get Intel Pentium 3 processor. 256 megs of RAM, 797 megahertz. Huh. Well, that, I'm actually impressed. So either somebody upgraded this. Or I've got one of the nice Compact Presario 5000s. Actually, somebody did upgrade this because it's got a Celeron sticker on the side of it. So, yeah, this thing's been upgraded. This thing's been hot rod. It makes this thing even more enticing than before. Get out of that. Should be able to get into all kinds of crap now that we have the administrator account. Let's get out of this. Real question. Windows key is going to be what is on the Madame Julie account, because that is presumably the one that was used the most. There was an update thing that popped up, I don't know what for, because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. The system could not, oh it didn't even respond to all my keyboards. What was that? Oh, I think I screwed it up. I made it freeze. Hang on a minute. This is probably going to take some doing. Alright, let's try this again. Fix the camera. That's better. Standard bliss wallpaper. Let's see. Guide utilisateur. And then something else. I can't read it from here. I didn't think my eyes were that bad, but I guess they are. I wonder if the camcorder can read it a little bit better than I can. Let's find out whether that's true or not. What does that actually say? Le mystère de José Lemy. Yeah, I know a little bit of French, don't I? No more than a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna snoop around on this, see if they left me any music or something that's actually useful. And then I think I'm going to trash... Oh, that thing that popped up that said update, I just realized was probably AVG. Um, probably hasn't been updated since, like, 1699, of course. So I'm going to see what all's on this. I'm going to do that off-camera because I don't want to expose people's secrets on the Internet. Even though I've probably already exposed a whole bunch of them, which is by showing off the file names of some of these things. But that's alright, I didn't show the contents. Um, I could do a whole lot. I could show all about the previous owner's life, all kinds of things, but I'm not going to do that because I am an upstanding, wholesome person. What a joke that is. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get that off the off the, ta off the chair so I can sit down and I can look at some of this stuff, and then I'll decide what I want to do with it.
Okay. I uh, think I'm going to conclude the video because I don't think there's really much else that I can think of to say in this particular video. I'm probably going to still nose around in the previous owner's files for a little while, but I think for this video, that's pretty much all that she wrote. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, definitely feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time when we may be taking a look at the system once again, doing some uh, hardware stuff with it. My plans for this actually are to use it as a basis for my CBT6500 3 channel and testing various types of malware. I think that ought to be interesting. Especially considering it's got a Windows 98 license on the back of it, I can really use that. So, that is probably what this is going to end up being. At least for the Windows stuff, but nevertheless, I'll figure out what all that is all about once... We'll, cro we'll, we'll cross that bridge once we get to it. So, there you go. There's your video of a compact Presario 5000 that has been hot-rotted a little bit. Hope to see you next time. Till then. Alright, just a quick little addendum to the video. This is a Samsung 40 gigabyte hard drive. It's installed here. It's got screamer bearings though. It's kind of odd to see that in a Samsung. I thought they were fluid bearings by this point. And we got a smart error on the drive. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oops. Smart at read attribute data. You can see that we have got one reallocated sector and that is pretty much it. So not really enough to condemn it. That isn't really the point. I verified that both optical drives are working. I'm booting from the CD-ROM right now. I was using the DVD burner earlier. So both of these are working fine. We're going to go into boot and nuke and wipe the crap out of this hard drive. I did notice that the keyboard, my HP keyboard, wasn't working earlier. So I don't know what the deal is with that. This keyboard's kind of finicky. Let's see if I can see if it actually works now. Eh, yeah, keyboard's working. Or it was, and now it's doing some weird crap. Let's go ahead and try and show this on camera. I don't know, I've never seen a keyboard do this. You can see I'm pushing pretty much, let's push pretty much any key. And it's pushing the number lock button. So I don't know if it doesn't like this software, the UBCD, or if this keyboard's just a piece of crap. I'm willing to go for the latter. But it's probably going to go into the pool, and that is pretty much it for the video.